Hello, everybody. How are you? Hi. Good? You can hear us? Good. Wonderful. Thanks for calling in and calling in again for this second session. Uh, I've got Dr. George Price here with us. Um, and Kevin Kicking Woman will be joining us as well. And we've got a wonderful session about story and song. And uh, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you, George. Thank All you. Right, enjoy. All right. Well, hi, everybody. Good to see you. It's kind of fun to be out of the normal routine, isn't it? Me too. I don't usually do the this. The conference recording has ended. Oh. I just got a message saying the conference recording has ended. <laughs> Kathleen's going to fix that for okay. us. <laughs> I was just getting started. Okay. All right. Go, go ahead. I actually have us recording right there. So. Oh, okay. That's why we do double backup, triple backup. Okay. It's a good lesson for students. <laughs> It's nice to have a director or two around. Okay. okay. Should I start? Go right ahead. Now? Yes. Well, she's doing that. Okay. Yes. Conference recording has started. Okay. Now we're back on. Okay. Well, good to see everybody. Uh, I'm a, I'm kind of an old guy. You might have guessed. Uh, I might have had some of your uh, parents and grandparents students uh, going back 31 years. Uh, so I'm uh, George Price. I've been teaching for 31 years. I did my first 10 years at Two Eagle River School, then uh, three years at Salish Kootenai College, SKC. They like that. <laughs> like that. All right. And I've been at UM uh, since uh, 1998, right after I was done at SKC. I think I'm coming up on 18 years at UM. I teach the Intro to Native American Studies and about four other classes, including a couple uh, African American History and uh, American History. And uh, glad to see you. And I, I'm going to be interactive with you. You can ask questions at any time. Hey, the drum's here. Good to see you guys. Can they can see, they like, all it? four of these? Yeah, they can see everybody. All four yeah. of the pictures. Everybody sees each other. That's cool. Can you hear Browning? Yeah. We can, right. Yes, Browning, we can hear you. Awesome. I just wanted to check. Perfect. Amy, really quickly, um, will you try to mute your microphone really quickly and just, just test that out? Okay. Okay, perfect. So if we could keep it muted just because there's a lot of different groups, then we won't have the background noise today. All right. Sorry for the interruption. Please no, I'm, I'm flowing. I'm going with the flow. <laughs> I'm ready for anything here, except that guy dancing again. I not. I don't know if I'm ready for that. No. <laughs> I'm just joking with you. You can get up and dance, do whatever you want to do. Okay. Uh, so, you know, I've had a variety of experiences and uh, learned a lot. Along the way, you learn a lot from my students. I still do as an old man, 64 years old, and uh, I still learn from everybody. So what I thought I'd do is just talk a little bit about my people, uh, the Wampanoag Nation of uh, Massachusetts, just briefly, and then we'll talk about the UM experience and, and uh, my classes in particular, and whatever you want to know. So, uh, how many of you ever heard of uh, the Wampanoag Nation from Massachusetts? You can raise your hands. There's one. I see a hand. Heard of the Wampanoag Nation. All right. Uh, you spend any time back east or you just kind of heard of them? Mm -hmm. Is, can you hear me okay? He can okay. hear you just fine, yeah. yeah. Well, um, for a lot of you who never heard of us, <laughs> We're the Indians that never get named when they talk about the pilgrims at Thanksgiving. You know, they usually have that lesson. That's as old as I am teaching people about the, the pilgrims and the Indians at Thanksgiving. But they never uh, mentioned our people by name. We were the people who lived right there when they came in at uh, Plymouth, Massachusetts and all over southeast Massachusetts and uh, not until maybe the last five six years have you started to see our name
come into the curriculum around the country. And so I got a map. I'm not going to do a lot of map work with you. Let me get that thing off the screen. And uh, <coughs> learning how to be a weatherman here and point to something on a screen that I'm not standing right next to. Okay, so I put my hand back here. Oh, yeah, that's how you do it. And we got clouds coming in from the northeast. <laughs> okay, there. And you see, uh, there's uh, Massachusetts. And what I have are just the tribal names. And we're uh, right about down there along the coast. And um, four bands of Wampanoags, and I'm of the Asonet band. There's two federally recognized and two that aren't. And our, our band, the Asonet, where that, uh, how do you do that, black dot? is oh yeah this way is that way okay everything's opposite when i do this that's uh, our people by the Essawamset pond and the titicut reservation was right up there and uh, that's where my ancestors on my mom's side come from and on my dad's side they're uh, african and chukta but also among the wampanoags as i'll show you in these pictures you'll see let me get to the next map. Oh, yeah, there, there you can see a little close-up. Whoa, how come it jumps around like that? Okay, there you go. And uh, you can see the lake and the Namaskat River and all that there. Right about here. Okay, and I'm going to move over here to put my images on of my relatives and elders and young people and all of that. One of my uh, first uh, mentors on my first trip over there. Now, I grew up in California, didn't get out to my ancestral homeland till uh, I was in my 30s, I think. No, closer to 40. And uh, been out there several times and met a lot of people since then. And this is Nanapashamit. And you see a uh, traditional hairstyle there, a uh, shaved head with a long uh, lock in the back there, and uh, wampum jewelry, and a lot of things you don't see too often out here in the West. And my other mentor, elder, I've got on the screen here, Tall Oak, Wampanoag and Pequot, and uh, He's getting up there in his late 70s now. This is an old photo from about 15 years ago. And I'll just show you some of our ancestors who were photographed in the 1800s and early 1900s. And without too many comments and let you guys ask questions whenever you want to. Now you'll have to shout out or get up and dance or something when you want to ask a question or wave their How do they do that when they want to ask a question? If you want to raise your hand, just go ahead and raise your hand and let me know. And we'll just pause too. Okay. Yeah. So you, you can see a lot of the old timers here from the four different bands. You got a question there? We do. We have a question here. All right. We're, we're rolling now. Okay. Go ahead. What's your name? I'm Josiah. Hi, Josiah. Go right ahead. Ask your question there. Um, Josiah is wondering if the Browning Group is going to perform at some point. <laughs> oh, I, I, you know, I wouldn't be the one to ask. Browning's giving thumbs up to that. So, yes, they are. And uh, Okay. Great. Any and whenever, whenever you guys give me the signal there... They can jump in any time. Okay. And and so I'll just show these images real quick. And Oh, I just... Uh, what happened? It there you go. Stopped. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And back when photography first started, they would dress Native people up uh, in these top hats and back in the 1840s and the, with the early photography studios and take these formal portraits to try to drum up business. Photography invented in 1840, uh, the Daguerreotype. 
So yeah, as you can see, a lot of uh, mixture, both Afro-Native and uh, European in the old colonial times. Things that you don't hear people talk about too much. And on into the 19th century. Out here, you know, people are more used to being mixed with French or Scottish or cowboy or mm. one of the mother cultures, you know, and not used to our history back there in the East. And we also had uh, female leaders or chiefs, the word for leader is sachem, and so sachem is a female leader, and there's uh, one of the gals from the late uh, 1890s there. Uh, and, and our neighbors, the Massachusetts tribe to the north, also had male and female uh, chiefs. And there's a Massachusetts Squasachum. Uh, and I'm part Massachusetts, too. Uh, we mixed and mingled a lot, the two tribes, especially after our lands got overrun and we got pushed around. Yeah, no, yeah, there's my grandma's cousin with a traditional lodge uh, called a Witu and covered with birch bark. It's like a, a wigwam, and you can see those if you go out there to Plymouth, Massachusetts, to the Live-In Museum. And uh, when my daughter and uh, granddaughter were living in Hawaii, some uh, there's my daughter Faith and granddaughter Dahlia. She's in college now. This is an old picture. When they were living in Hawaii, some Wampanoags came out to a powwow they had there then. And that little gal in the front there, she's a little Hawaiian gal that came in and posed with them. She made friends with my granddaughter over there. So I just thought I'd show you the last two slides there are, are modern times. And uh, this is from last summer. They, they already had a bunch of the small uh, dugout canoes there at the uh, village site in Plymouth. And they made their first uh, reconstruction of a uh, large seaworthy, uh, seaworthy uh, canoe here. And they had some that were bigger than this where you can get 70 or 80 people in them going out whaling. And this one they got about, I don't know, 15 or so. But a uh, wonderful uh, experience building a dugout canoe. And there's our uh, kids at the language immersion school where, let me back up here. Oh, mm -hmm. go this way? Okay. And where they're uh, teaching Wampanoag language. That's been going on for a good five to seven or eight years and, uh, and uh, growing. And uh, more of the young people speak the language than the old folks. It's a little reverse of what's going on out here where your last, uh, your uh, most common speakers are those folks out here, and they're trying to pass it on to the younger people. Okay, and so I'll just uh, talk about the university now. What image should I leave it on there in the background? I like that uh, canoe. That's a good That's a Yeah, good I'm going to leave that on in the background while we talk. Perfect. And then I'll just make that big. Boy, this thing sure jumps a lot. Okay. I'll take it from you. Yeah, I didn't want to hold that <laughs> control anymore anyway. There we go. So um, I'll talk about my class, uh, my NAS intro class. It's a big lecture hall. That's one thing when you do go to the university, uh, more so than a, a community college or Salish Kootenai College or Blackfeet College. Uh, you'll get into these big lecture halls. That's something to kind of warn you about. We're, I get up to 260 people in one classroom sometimes. And uh, you, usually I'll have out of a group uh, that size, maybe 10 to 15 Native students. There's about 800 and something Native students at the University of Montana, but most of them aren't interested in Native American studies. They're taking other kinds of classes in the sciences and the arts and journalism, as you heard with the last presenters. And and so uh, most of the classes you get in there, you'll 
be around uh, mostly non-natives, but uh, some natives in all the classes. And, and, and we study, you know, uh, culture, history, and uh, who we are now, the present. And I got a book called Past and Present that I uh, wrote and we use in the class. Okay, so uh, tell me uh, what you've heard about uh, Native American studies at University of Montana. I'm kind of curious to see, you know, what gets back to the people, you know, on, along the grapevine, what sort of comments and uh, descriptions of our courses uh, that you've heard about. Browning, let's start with you today. Or anybody? <laughs> How do you do that? Um, what? Do you want me to repeat it? Yeah. Yes. Repeat the question? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I would just like to get some uh, feedback from you guys on what sort of stories you've heard about uh, classes at the University of Montana, and if you have any questions about what goes on there. Uh, you know, uh, I guess my area is Native American studies and history, mm -hmm. so if any anything you've heard about that. Uh, or I would say or any questions that they might have, maybe being interested in coming to the program. Yes. Um, go, yeah, go ahead. And yeah, I'm questions. wide open. That was just kind mm -hmm. of an idea I threw out there for you. that yellow. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, I think I've been in that room. <laughs> I, I could yeah, hear so you there. Right again there, you guys kind of broke out. Uh, I've been to the uh, classroom there in Missoula. I, I don't know what we did though. I remember, I remember I was in that though. Oh, you've been there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, just kind of as a visitor, you're still in yeah. high school, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Did you go to one of those gigantic uh, lecture halls with a hundred to two hundred or so people in it? Yeah, well, there's a lot in there. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Let's say, Pablo, do you have any questions? Me? Do you want to ask your question? Raise your hand. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I see. You're seeing, you're seeing some of your buddies here. Okay. Meet, meet and greet. Meet, meet, greet. Oh, I don't think you heard you. <laughs> Tell him you have a question. I got a question? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Go ahead. What is the most language in the college? The, the most what's in the college? <laughs> what is the most spoken language? The most English. Spoken language? Yeah, everybody <laughs> speaks English. Native oh, native language. <laughs> well, Blackfeet. Uh, you know, we that's the only uh, uh, language class, and Blackfeet and si sign language are offered in Native American studies. And I think there's the guy also teaches a little Arapaho as well. And, uh, we got about three different people teaching native languages. We're looking to get Salish or uh, Kootenai taught there too eventually, but uh, haven't got anybody on board for that. And another thing is there's a funding issue about hiring new uh, faculty and staff to offer the new classes, and we're waiting on more uh, funding, too. Yeah. Missoula, do you have any questions? 
We are checking in. Are there any questions? Go ahead. Yeah, so everybody. I think we're good. Great. And I see two hands up there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, what was the most interesting thing that you studied? About in my whole life? <laughs> oh, when I, when I was a student? I would say, you know, uh, I've, I've studied all kinds of things. I even used to be an art teacher and an artist, but uh, what brought me into history was learning about my family and their stories and uh, things that had never been taught to me in school, and I got to uh, looking into it on my own, and it turned me into a historian. Uh, I had no idea that's what I was going to be when I was a young guy. But when I saw that our people weren't talked about in the history books and that there are so many stories about so many tribes and so many different people in America that weren't told, I decided I was going to do something about that. But first, I had to get educated on all of it myself before I could uh, teach it to others. How's that for an answer? Did I go on too long? <laughs> All right, one more There's question. another guy there. Go <laughs> here. Uh, my name is Bailey, and I was Hi, wondering Bailey. how much Hi, students go to uh, the university. It's about 12,000 <laughs> last I checked. About 12,000 and a little over 800 of them native. That's the, the native population's the largest uh, non-white or non-European population there. Yep. Allie, 12,000. There's That's bigger than a lot of towns, isn't it? Go ahead, um, Kathleen. I saw a question there. Go ahead. You said, you said that um, you got yourself um, educated before you said you wanted to reteach more of the uh, Native American history to people. Have you ever thought about rewriting, or not rewriting, but writing a history book that involves a lot more of our like Native culture and things that have happened involved? Yes, and I'll tell you, I've got a, uh, an overview textbook that I use in the intro to Native American class that I edited and wrote parts of it, and then I included other people's writings. I've also been part of a project that's going to get published pretty soon, where we had historians from about uh, 10 different tribes on the mainland, and Hawaiians from Hawaii, uh, Native historians from all over uh, the U.S. get together, and we put together a big history book with all our stories, and uh, a Salish woman, uh, Julie Kajun, put this project together. We worked on it for years. We're waiting for the last pieces to get put in place, but that's going to be coming out and be able to use that in the high schools uh, maybe by this time next year. Uh, we're, we're waiting for some editing and final uh, pieces of chapters to be put in. And, uh, I just did my part. I wrote two chapters on my people from back east, and uh, but we had people from all over the country, many different tribes. So, and there's other people doing this kind of work too, and we'll see more and more. And I have a bibliography I could send to your schools, uh, lots of good books that have come up in recent years. All right. Wonderful. Well, we're gonna bring we're gonna bring on Kevin. Okay. Come on, and I'm I'm wondering. Should if, I like, move over here? Yes, and I'm wondering okay. maybe as an intermission, should we have the Browning students perform? Browning, are you ready to perform? Oh, I think this is this is being received very well by all the other classes. So, Browning, if you are ready. Make sure you unmute your microphone <laughs> so we can hear you. <clears throat> oh, hold on just a second here. Try Sing. now. There we go. Sing hard, can hear We can hear you. Very good. All right. Ready to go. Yeah. 
You guys are ready to go. some reason they're not coming up all of a sudden. Hmm. You want to your saws if you're saying that.
Okay, so Browning, just for the sake of time, I want to get Kevin in here, and then after um, he has a chance to present, we'll come back for some more songs. Does that sound like a plan? That was fantastic. Hey, thank you guys. Um, it's good to be here. I am from Browning, a little community out there where Star School is. I can see Mr. White Man there. I grew up with him uh, out at Star School. And just a little bit about me before we get rolling into some song and how important song is to me. Um, you know, I grew up on the reservation, a little community of Star School, and I left when I was 18 and went into uh, Haskell. Then from Haskell, I joined the military and went to the United States Navy for uh, four years. And after that, I uh, moved to Missoula here, married my wife here. We have five kids. And... Uh, I've been working here in Missoula as a Hot Shots, and I taught in Browning for several years too. So uh, that was back in 99 to 2007, and a little stint at Heart Butte too. And I used to work for the law enforcement up here in Missoula, and now I'm currently uh, working here at the university as a tribal outreach coordinator. I attained my uh, BA in uh, Native American Studies and Anthropology, and my master's in cultural anthropology and music ethnology and I'm currently uh, a second year student on my doctorate so that's kind of a little gist of what I uh, I'm doing I see Audrey she's gonna be staying at the house uh, this weekend so a lot of you will be coming to Gallo raise your hand if you're coming to Gallo is Browning here yeah anyone in Browning coming hey, <laughs> yeah there Browning. you guys are <laughs> hey, not in your head really there you go you guys gonna sing That's good. So I'm looking forward to Gallo and having some visitors come here. So thank you guys for uh, listening here. I'm going to talk a lot about song here and the importance and what it was to me. You know, song has been extremely important to me because when I grew up on the reservation, I went through some, uh, some tough times uh, growing up, perhaps with child abuse and so forth. And I used to go to my sing a lot to get me through these trying times. And... So a lot of the old-time singers like Pat Kennedy, Wayne Bermudison, Percy Bullchild, um, I, I listen to. And I'm a straight-style singer. We talk about different types of music. We say contemporary and straight. And straight-style singing is very important to me. And we, there's two types of things. When I wrote my thesis, I wrote, the, wrote my thesis on the power of song through ceremony. And one of the things I wrote in there about was uh, sacred knowledge versus secular knowledge. And sacred knowledge is when there's only time when songs are supposed to be sung at a certain time in a ceremony. And secular knowledge is pretty much the ones that are sitting out there in CDs and they're at powwows. So these are the ones I'll try to share with you today. And, and with the drum group too, we can uh, kind of go back and forth on songs if you'd like. Uh, I had sang with us, uh, uh, Verlin White Man for years um, growing up in, and it was always fun. Uh, we were one of the original Little Corner singers back in the... Uh, I believe it was early 80s, uh, it was a spun off from the uh, Kicking Woman Singers. And so we, we started that group and I have groups I've sang with Bannock Boys, some stints with Black Lodge every now and then, or whoever, I was a, a professional drum hopper too. So uh, these are the things that um, I, I enjoyed growing up. And I'm gonna share some songs that helped me. You know, I'm part of the Rough Rider Society at home in the little community of Star School. My dad and my uncle was a part of, and my grandpa. Uh, and so I've always been a part of this, uh, the Anamskaks, the uh, Thunder Pipe I'm part of, and also the uh, Inikiks, the uh, Blackfeet Veteran Warrior Society. And I'll share some of those songs. And if you have any questions as we're talking and going along with this, uh, uh, I don't know, what do we have, 20 minutes? Yeah, we've yeah, got about 20, 20 minutes. About minutes, mm -hmm. so we can get try to get a lot in as we go. And, and, and raise your hand, and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. But I'm going to sing a... Uh, uh, I was going to sing the flag song, but uh, that drum group took it away from me, so. <laughs> took my thunder. What's wrong with you guys? So I'm going to sing some other songs, and, uh, uh, and we'll go from there. But I'm going to sing a thank you song, and I appreciate all you guys for coming because, you know, years ago, these songs are very important. We have thank you songs at home, and you don't hear them too much, and I was giving this thank you song to use, and I'm going to thank you guys for it. For uh, at least listening and the greatest thing we can have is knowledge with each other and one of them is through song. Song is extremely powerful and I tell you young people 
that before we even have ceremony at home, song is so important and vital. So here's a thank you song I was given. <clears throat> songs were used years ago and I remember in the old community uh, hall round hall the old it was a uh, place where people had the Christmas dance and I remember when people would get gifts they would stand up with these gifts in a giveaway and they would give thanks and that's one of the songs they would use and so I thought I'd share that with you and also I'm going to share uh, one old round dance that I like um, I'm not sure where it comes from but Mr. Stan Whiteman might know where it comes from but I know it comes from home and uh, I'm going to sing that. And you guys can sing a round dance after me if you'd like. We'll have a challenge. <laughs> <coughs> this is old style now. <coughs> uh, uh, <coughs> uh, uh,
that's no fair. You use words. You can't use words. <laughs> All right. Here's one more. sing that song it reminds me of a gentleman that I sang this song for and he was in his passing one of my good friends like a brother to me a lot of you guys probably know him at Browning his name was Armin Berbison and he was a good grass dancer so when I sing that song it always reminds me of him and the words in there I don't know why you're going to tell me goodbye so but good job you guys that's good singing all right go go Browning, can you unmute yourself? good well we're going to be closing out here in a few um i want to thank the browning uh group for singing and all the other schools for joining in it is always good to uh come and do these things but i want to also leave you guys with one thing you know i asked the elder one time i said i uh, asked him i said why are sometimes the young fellows or young people are all in so much turmoil and he put same he, he put it to me very uh simply he said we quit dreaming and i want to tell you guys if you dream you can achieve so when you get out and you you have your dreams and aspirations of whatever you want to do in life i really i i, I really want to tell you guys to reach for them and learning these songs and whatnot songs is extremely important to us and as native people and seeing these young people sit there and sing you know i've been singing all my life and my little nephew taylor edwards i could see him standing there looking for something you know um <laughs> 
it is always good. He's a good. It, it's good. It, it, it grounds you, and you, it, it's a big responsibility to carry songs. So I am very thankful to be here today. And if you dream in, in your aspirations, life, you can reach them and achieve them. So I'm going to have George say something, and then we're going to end with a uh, a praise song. I'm going to sing for y'all. These praise songs are hard to come by and hard to get. And I'm going to sing this praise song because, you know, I feel good today um, seeing all you young fellows. And especially the singing, that was good. And thank you, it means a lot to me. Yeah, thank you. I'll say, uh, thank you in the Wampanoag language. And also, sorry I had to walk out while you were singing. I got called from off stage, uh, but I just offered a drink of water. I didn't know what they wanted. Anyway, uh, and then I, I didn't come back on, but I was sitting there. Katapatish, thank you for being here. Uh, I also wanted to put in another good word for Kevin here. He's got a radio show at the college radio station uh, every Friday morning called Greet the Sun. Two hours of native music from all over the country or the world. I don't know. You got you come up with things I've never heard from uh, before from all over places, uh, Canada, America, all over. And so uh, when you get here to Missoula sometime, you could, uh, on a Friday, you could listen to Kevin every Friday morning, start off your day real good. He's also uh, spoken to my class and sung many times. And thank you all for being here. I hope to see you <clears throat> down the road uh, at the University of Montana someday. Hey, especially this Friday. Here's a praise song for you guys. So, if you can't stand. <clears throat> Sit up.